when this series started, the two things they said about the Bulls were they were old and they were tired, which obviously had nothing to do with what was going to happen in the future. Well, I mean, that's true. You know, we are old. And sure, we're tired. It's been a long season. But mentally, we, we, have, a, we have a vision. We have a finish that we have to attain. You know? And sometimes you have to do it when you old and you're tired you know and I think it, it's the test of your will to succeed when you have to deal with you know some of these negatives and I'm pretty sure you know by the end of this playoffs you'll see the old and the tired people were very very young and strong mentally your confidence as a team really didn't wane going into Utah well a lot of people thought they had a tough time with Indiana they'll never get by Utah their confidence or their overconfidence uh, was our biggest, you know, positive, our biggest strength going into this, this series. And they were expected to dominate us because of many games and minutes that I've played and Scotty has played and whatever. Um, and I felt it was still in our favor. You know, when we had a rhythm, we were gaining, improving as we moved deeper into the playoffs. Sure, we went to a seven-game series with Indiana, but I think that was a plus instead of a minus. Now, going in, you say the pressure's on Utah. Here it is about a week later. You guys are up 3-1 the pressure squarely on the Bulls to win this thing. As Utah, they have nothing to lose at this point. Well, I, I disagree with you. I think, uh, you know, no one anticipated us being in this scenario, 3-1, an opportunity to close it out in Chicago. They're looking at trying to get it back to Utah, so the pressure's still on them. You know, they haven't lived up to the expectations of Salt Lake City or, or Utah and, and, and most of the people who predicted them to beat us. You know, so they have to contend with those thoughts. I don't think that in, in their mind, they haven't been able to solve our defense, you know, which is a big key. You know, um, our defense has always been able to hold them, you know, whenever it's a necessary need for that. Uh, in some of their minds, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they think that they should be swept by now, you know, four games to zero. So much respect for people who've gone in the trenches with you, you know, who have come, you know, from the bottom with you to the top. You know, uh, a lot of these get guys that I'm playing with now uh, never really experienced when Chicago Stadium was only 6,500 people watching the game. That builds camaraderie between you know, friends and players and coaches and stuff like that. That to rebuild or to start over or to have that with someone else. You basically have to go through the same processes. You know, you can't skip steps to to earn that type of respect. You got to go through all the disappointments that a relationship must go through. Have a sense of respect for the people who have laid the groundworks, so that you could be a profitable organization. And I'm not trying to twist Jerry Reinsdorf's arm. It sounds like it, though. This particular year, you are as happy, as comfortable as I've seen you in a playoff situation in a championship run situation what's the reason for that uh, enjoying the moment you know uh, enjoying the moment when you really view this as the uh, people are speculating you know, it's the last dance or it could be one more year it could be two more years but with those thoughts wavering and, and hovering around you you look at the moment and say, let's enjoy the next step you don't take it for granted you know, in previous years, you probably have taken it for granted, but don't take it for granted this time. Won five on the verge of maybe winning six. Do you feel yourself getting full? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're hungry, are you full yet? No, you feel yourself getting full because each time that you win, it takes away a little bit of that hunger, you know, which um, you know, is, is a challenge within itself. You know, it's a battle within the, 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 your mind to find a challenge to go to that same place that you've been five times before, you know, and that's hard, you know. Um, you know when people say, well, the first one was the hardest, no. The last one's the hardest because you're battling with yourself. Are you starting to feel satisfied at least? 
you know, as an athlete, are you feeling satisfied? Because I know at times that we've talked, you say you're still searching for that perfect game, still searching for to find in your mind greatness as you describe it. I'm getting better. I'm getting at my peak. I'm getting at my limit. Physically, I think I am at my limit. Mentally, it's, it's, it's a lot of empty space that I don't know much about, but I keep forcing myself to learn more about the game. I am getting to a point where I'm, you know, I'm maxing out my education about the game of basketball. And when you get to that point, it's a necessity to pass it. So you know, where Dr. J was when I came in the game, you know, I feel like I'm in a mirror and the face has changed from Dr. J to me. You talk about the change, you talk about the passing on, your decision as to what you're going to do, what kind of timetable do you have on that? It's not really a timetable. I don't want to put a timetable on it. I, I think you know, it would hit me. You know, it would come to me and say, well, you know, evaluating all the things that have been done and all the decisions that have been made, and my feeling would tell me, hey, maybe this is a good time just to say, hey, I'm done. Even as we watch Michael Jordan at night try to lead the Bulls to their sixth NBA title, the question remains, is this Jordan's last game here in Chicago? We